Thanks for joining us again for another edition of Practical Assertion. This week, I thought I would launch our discussion with an idea taken from the thought of the adage, the light at the end of the tunnel. The visual that this whole saying conjures in our minds is darkness all around. Some tunnels are dimly lit while others are pitch black. Some are damp and musty, others dry and airy. Most of the tunnels are underground, which contributes to the ambiance. Webster defines a tunnel as a hollow conduit or recess, tube, well, a covered passageway, specifically a horizontal passageway through or under an obstruction, a subterranean gallery as in a mine. The majority of times we hear or use the old saying is when we find ourselves in a bad situation and are hoping to see some semblance of light. This much anticipated light you see would signal accomplishment, success, and or deliverance from our current abysmal circumstance. For some, this could be financial trauma, a relationship fiasco, some health challenge, or any number of dreadful conditions. So the question in my mind is, how does one end up in a tunnel? You do understand that there is light at both ends of the tunnel, right? That being said, why would one leave the light and enter into darkness? I bet you never thought about it like that, huh? Truth be told, we find ourselves in these dark, dingy, dirty tunnels because of the path that we chose. Some end up in tunnels because they have tunnel vision. Ah, now this is deep right here, so pay very close attention. Webster defines tunnel vision as constriction of the visual field resulting in loss of peripheral vision, extreme narrowness of viewpoint, narrow-mindedness. This idea of constriction means to make narrow. The notion of loss of peripheral vision means that an individual cannot see what's going on around them. What I find baffling is that most of the time, those who have tunnel vision are made aware, are cautioned, and are, in many cases, outright warned of the impending trouble ahead. But because they are so narrow-minded, they go headlong, recklessly, and hastily into the subterranean slump, the tunnel. Something interesting takes place in the tunnel. Ever notice how our eyes open as wide as possible when entering the darkness of a tunnel? If only our eyes would have been this wide open previously. Once in the tunnel, the mind begins to reflect upon the current state of affairs. Now, all of a sudden, things become ever so clear. One can now see the poor decisions. Given the fact that there is only darkness ahead, one begins to look back. This gives birth to the old saying, hindsight is 20-20. 2020, as you know, is considered perfect vision. It is at this point the individual's perception is also clear. In most tunnels that I've been in, every so often there is a light. The analogy here is that when we are in our circumstantial tunnels, every once in a while, a light comes on. It is amazing what a little light can do. Speaking of light, could it be that those individuals who find themselves in a tunnel where darkness envelops them were always in a tunnel? God created us to be adaptable. In other words, our bodies have a unique way of adjusting to darkness. If forced to dwell there too long, our eyes dilate and we find ourselves utilizing our other senses to help us to see. Our hearing is amplified, our arms are outstretched so that our hands can feel what is ahead of us. Our sense of smell intensifies to help signal possible danger. We slow our pace due to the uncertainty of our surroundings, all in an effort to find our way to a more favorable condition. Perhaps, no, without a doubt, if we had summoned all of these senses earlier, we would not be in our current debacle. We continue moving ever so gingerly, cautiously, and tentatively, which by the way is how we should have always proceeded, I'm just saying, hoping to see the light at the end of the tunnel. At first, the light is still a mystery because we can't quite make out what's on the other side of our tunnel. But the closer we get to the end, the clearer things get. Let's just hope that the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train. Keep heading for the light. Did you get anything out of this discussion? Do you have a better perspective, excuse the pun, on your current situation? Gain any insight on future moves? Ready to take a closer look at what others are trying to get you to see? Let me know what you think comment on Facebook, like us and share us and share this with everyone else you know. 
Comment on our blog page at www.ascrt-usa.com and we'll look forward to seeing you next week for another edition of Practical Assertion. Take care.